Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. This video is all about the Docker crash course for absolute beginners. Come, let's take a look at our agenda. So we'll start with the introduction to the Docker's containers and registry in plain English, so you'll understand better with more examples. Followed by, we will do a software setup and explore the Docker desktop and Docker hub. So we will be also creating an account in Docker hub. If you already have it, that's fine. And then we will also start with building the Docker images for the .NET Core web API and also as a bonus I will give you the same thing how to do it for the Angular 16 application and this is going to be a complete hands-on experience followed by we will be configuring and deploying this image from the docker hub registry to the azure web app and that is also going to be a complete hands-on now then finally we will summarize everything and then we will move on to the next item Right, so in this application, I'm going to use the existing restaurant table reservation app as an example for both .NET Core 7 app and the Angular 16 app. So come without delay, let's get started. What is Docker? Docker allows you to package your apps and all its dependency into one neat box. Let me explain the Docker using the analogy of this shipping container. Imagine you are in the business of transporting the goods around the world like toys, clothes or electronics. Traditionally, you will have to pack each item separately which was time consuming and it sometimes led to a items getting damaged along the way. Now enter Docker. Docker is like a standardized shipping container. It's a big, strong and consistent box that can hold a variety of things. You put your goods into this container, close it up and it's ready to be shipped. What makes Docker special is that this container can be easily loaded onto different types of trucks, ships or even the airplanes. It doesn't matter what kind of transportation you use, your container fits perfectly. The beauty of Docker is that you can pack everything your business needs like your goods and the tools you handle them into these containers so when you are ready to move, you don't need to worry about how to pack each item separately. You just pick up your prepaid Docker container and they work seamlessly with your transportation method. In the world of software, Docker works the same way. It helps developers pack their application and all the software tools they need into these standardized containers. This makes it easier to run the same application on different computers. Just like how shipping containers can be loaded onto the different vehicles, Docker ensures that your application runs consistently no matter where it's deployed just as shipping containers ensuring your goods arrive in act regardless of the mode of transportation all right it's time to set up our local machine and we will install these softwares okay so what do we need we need to install the docker desktop so we have to go to this website and then get the downloads and then we will log into hub.docker.com if you do not have just register it and then this is how it looks once you register it. Once you log into this, you will see these kind of things. You may not see the repository. Then we will install the Visual Studio software. I am having the community version 2022. You can install whatever you want. Minimum is 2019. Then we will install .NET SDK 7. Now it's time to put our hands on deck and come. Let's get installed all of those. So first thing, I went to this website. You can Google it as Docker and then you can go to this URL. And then here you see this softwares are available for Windows, Mac and Linux. Based on your OS, you download it. For me, it's Windows. So I clicked on Windows and the software is getting downloaded. I will be installing the software. Now, next thing is what we will do once we have the software ready, like installed. This is how it looks. So you will see the Docker desktop and then initially you will see do a sign in. You need to sign in. So now before you sign in, you know, there are a couple of things we can see here, but we will explore those things. So how do you sign in? So if you click on it, it will take you to the docker, login.docker.com. Here you need to first sign up, right? So if you haven't signed up earlier, you need to sign up. Click on the sign up and follow the instruction. So once you create your account, it's free only. So do not panic. So just in create an account. And once you create an account, you'll be able to sign in. I already have an account. So I'm going to click on login. And this is the username. Remember, my username matters here. Username is learn smart coding so once you are done that right see it signed up there as well as here also it signed in right so it got automatically synced up with the website now we are literally working on our login on my local one this is called local uh, docker desktop this software has images containers and you know a lot of other things because i already explored so much it is showing me all of these things if you're doing it for the first time, you may not see all of these. That's absolutely fine. We will explore one by one. 
Now let's minimize this. Let's go and install the other software. See community version Visual Studio 2022 is still free for developers like us, right? So I will go to this community version and download the version 2022. That's the latest as we speak today. So once I have this Visual Studio setup installed, I'll be able to install all this required softwares and then, uh, you know, uh, checkbox uh, the Windows one. So this is how you will do. Click on the Community 2022, the softwares will get installed. After this, just follow the uh, installation steps and, you know, you will be able to uh, finish your local setup. If you already have it, it's absolutely fine. And then the next thing that we have to continue is we have to install the .NET SDK 7. The reason why we are installing this is we are going to use our .NET Web API made up of uh, .NET Core 7 as well as the Angular 16. So for that, we need this SDK to be installed in the local machine so that the application will run, right? So that's why I'm installing this um, as we speak. Uh, this is October 2023. In November 2023, .NET 8 will get released. I, if you are watching in November, let me know in the comment section what version you have it. And then once you have this SDK installed, that's it guys. We have all the required softwares in the local machine to be installed is done. Now it's all completely demo. So we are going to walk you through a very important steps in Docker to understand what is Docker, how Docker is working and all of those things, then we will do it. So we are going to use this restaurant table reservation app, which is built in .NET Core 7. And this is what we're going to see. Now let's go into see the demo. So now what you do, go to this github.com under my account, learn smart coding. Once you go there, you will have plenty of repository, but click on this repository. And this is the repository that we are going to work towards this complete course. Okay. This is in, this is a built in uh, course this is a very good uh, series. If you have not watched this, go and watch it. So this complete thing will have a lot of feature. It's like a, for a full stack developer, this is a good starting point, right? So I'm going to take this application and going to use the Docker. Now, if you look at this, uh, if you run this application, you will see these endpoints. Basically, what we are going to do with this application is this application will expose an n number of restaurant and its respective branches. From a UI perspective, from an Angular perspective, you will be, this is the Angular application. So from this application, any user, whether they are logged in or not logged in, they can come and, uh, you know, search for a restaurant and a particular branch and they'll be able to reserve their seats. See, I'm choosing a particular date. I'm trying to book a particular table for my family. I can do that. And I don't need to have logged in, but you can still log in, which means we are using beautiful Azure ADB to see also in this course. Right, so it has a lot of things to be done. So once this is done, you see this, it's beautifully able to log in and get you your climbs and reservations. It's basically for your understanding, right? So when I log in, I'm like a super admin. So they're all based on a new concept called API connector. We have a lot of good features in this uh, series. If you missed it, go completely watch the series. Uh, now, long story short, right? So this is our UI. So this is made up of Angular 16 application, which is internally calling this endpoint. I mean the API endpoint. So down the line in our course, we will be doing a Docker containerization for both .NET Web API 7 as well as the Angular 16 application. Okay. I'm trying to show you how application looks so you feel good about uh, what you're going to work on. All right. Now coming back to uh, to the same restaurant uh, table booking app reservation API, go here. You can either download the zip file or you can click on this URL and you can clone it. Very simple to clone. Go to a particular repository, uh, you know, the directory wherever you wanted to clone. And then all what you have to do is to use a simple command called git space clone followed by just paste the URL that you copied. Once you do that, it will download like this and I'm going inside this and I'm going to open up the solution. When I open up the solution, it's going to open up in Visual Studio 2022 and I've already enlarged it. See, this is a, a real time project, right? So this is this has a good architecture. It has a lot of good things. Laid architecture uh, in a real company, how they develop. That's how it is developed. So this application is what we are going to do. So it has the API, it has services, it has core data structure. You know, the database is the SQL server and we have a separate layer for that. All what you have to do now in order to get started with Docker is you have to right click on the project and you're going to add 
our docker support so right click on this project you can outside also you can click add and click on docker support there is something called right click add docker support see what this will do is uh, it will ask you what OS you want. We will choose Linux and once you say OK, see it, it, it did the docker file for us, right? It's beautiful. Now this is all possible because the project was already completed. So it added here the required uh, things like you know all the projects. See it starts with uh, from, it is pulling up an image and then it is going and uh, finding the SDK 7 and then getting all the codes and trying to build. Once it is built and then it will publish it. Once it is publishes the final content, it is what it will open up. Now, don't worry about this. I will walk you through all of these steps one by one. But if you look at this app, apart from the uh, the Kestrel and the IAS, there's something called Docker also. So from, from where this Docker is coming, let's go and explore. If you go to the launch setting, uh, because you added the Docker support, there is a bunch of information added here, the whatever I'm highlighting, right? That's what the Docker supports. So it automatically added that it's the service host service port slash swagger. So when you run through this Docker, it will take its own port and open up. And the port it has taken is 32770. You can see in the URL. And even when you do this, the application is working, right? I'm able to get the data. So absolutely fine. We are able to run through the Docker also. Great. Now let's explore step by step of what is this. All right, this Docker file is used to build a Docker image for a .NET Core application, specifically for a web API, and it's organized into multiple stage for clarity and efficiency. Now let's break it down step by step. The first one is the base image. Now it starts with a base image from a Microsoft container registry called mcr.microsoft.com that contains the ASP.NET runtime for .NET 7.0. Now it sets the working directory inside the container to slash app. It exposes the port 80 and 443 indicating that this container can receive incoming network requests on these ports. Now, the next stage is the build image. Now, it uses another base image from Microsoft. This time, th with the .NET SDK for version 7.0. Now, it sets the working directory to slash source src and then copies the project files for various components of the application into the container. This prepares the container for building the application. Okay, now run the .NET restore command to restore the NuGet packages for the API project. Now what happens? It sets the working directory to the location of the API project. It runs the .NET build command to build the application in release mode and outputs the build artifacts to slash app slash build. Now this stage is based on the build stage. It runs the .NET publish command which packages the application for deployment. The published application is placed in slash app slash publish and then it's configured to not to use the app host which helps reduce the image size now the final one is the it uses the base image of the starting point this is actually runtime image of the application now it sets the working directory inside the container to slash app copies the published application files from the published stage into the final image. It specifies the entry point for the container, which is the command that runs when the container is started. In this case, it's the .NET space, the application DLL namespace, which is lse.restaurantablebookingapp.api.dll. Now, to summarize, this Docker file defines the multi-stage build process to create an efficient Docker image for a .NET Core Web API. It separates the build and publishes steps to keep the final image small and optimized for production use. This approach ensures that only the necessary artifacts are included in the final stage, reducing its size and improving the deployment efficiency. I would like to briefly introduce some important terms like images, containers and registries to help you Grasp these concepts, consider the saying that a picture can convey a thousand words and I hope this visual analogy makes it clear and easier to understand. So our journey starts on our local workstation, right? So where we have created a Docker file. Now beyond our workstation, you'll find container registries, which are like package managers for images, similar to the NuGet for .NET, NPM for JavaScript, or even Maven for Java. These Registry stores published images that you can readily use in your projects. Various registry exits, including the default hub.docker.com 
and Microsoft's mcr.microsoft.com and even the private registries that you or your organization maintain for your proprietary images. The Docker file we have created contains a from line that reference another image hosted in one of these registries. In this example that I am illustrating, the from line points to the ASP.NET image with the, within the Microsoft registry. Then we build our application code and execute a build action using our Docker file. This process results in the creation of an image stored in an image database which is on our workstation. Note that the term database here is just loosely used. It's more like a catalog or a cache that keeps tracks of the image on our machine. Once you've built an image, we can choose to push it to, onto the registry. By default, this push operation goes to hub.docker.com. But you can select any container registry that suits your need. When an image is in a container registry, it becomes accessible for other workstations or servers. They can use a pull command to retrieve the image from the registry and add it to their local system. Finally, with an image at your disposal, you can use a run command specifying an image to create a container. This container acts as an instance of the local image and is assigned a unique identifier. If desired, you can generate multiple instances of this containers based on the same image. In summary, Images are what we create and can be pushed into registries, while containers are the results of running an image that we obtain from the registry. Now let's dive deeper into the process of building these images. The concept of layers is crucial in building container images. To start creating our Docker images, we use the add docker support action in our project which generates a docker file with one or more from lines. Now from each from line reference another images that act as the foundation of our image essentially defines the starting point for our application. We then add our own component and content to the space image. This involves actions like copying files into the image and sometimes running the additional operations such as the .NET publish command. Now it's important to note that the base image we start with may have followed a similar process beginning with a more fundamental image and building upon it. For example, in ASP.NET, the image likely begin with a specific Linux container and added ASP.NET runtime component. In our practice, we use the resulting base image. However, it's crucial to acknowledge that the initial image creation process may, may have added extra components or configuration. Our main goal when crafting container is to create efficient, compact images by selecting the right base image and including only what is essential for our application. Now, as a result, you may encounter a situation where certain simple commands like curl are not even available in the container you're using. This is intentionally to keep the Docker container as compact as possible. If you need commands like curl, you can add them when defining the image to ensure the container remains lightweight and focused on its intended purpose. Now let's delve into the specific process of building Docker images for .NET application and in this context, we, there are two main types of images to consider. First, there is a SDK base image. This image is comprehensive but relatively large. It serves the purpose of enabling us to build and publish the .NET code. However, once the build and publish tasks are done, we don't need the full SDK anymore. Instead, we can use a much smaller runtime image to execute our published executables, which is the exe files and the dynamic link libraries, which is the DLLs, right? To optimize the size of Docker images for .NET application, we use a technique called a multi-stage build process. To make our final image as compact as possible, here is how it works. We start by establishing a baseline image. That includes only the runtime essential needed for our application. Next, we introduce a separate starting point that involves a large SDK image, specifically for building and publishing purpose. On top of this SDK image, we import our own source code, compile it and publish it into the designated folder. Then we return to our original smaller runtime image using the content from our published folder generated during the build stage. The result of this meticulous process is a Docker image optimized for efficient and essentially as small as possible. 
This efficiency is crucial to ensure that our .NET applications Docker images are lightweight and well suited for their intended task, leaving us satisfied with the outcome. Now with enough theories and understanding, let's dive in, put our hands on the deck and completely it's a demo starting now. So we're going to go to our uh, .NET Web API application and this is the place where my application is there, right? So I'm opening this in the command prompt. So I'm just enlarging it so you can see what I'm doing. So I cleared it. Now what we're going to do is we're going to build, push and uh, publish the images. Now for the first command is the docker space build space dash t. Okay. And then followed by the image name. So I'm making this image name as lsc slash restaurant api followed by the, the tag colon tag. Right. So tag is 1.0. Now I'm specifying a dash f parameter that tells where is the docker file located. Okay. So if you look at this, this is the place where the docker file is located. Correct. So if you go back to my command slash f followed by dot slash the restaurant API slash docker file and then followed by a dot that will tell us this is the directory where the docker file can be found. Basically, you need to specify the path of the docker file. So now this what will do based on what we saw the docker file has the comments right so it's going to take the images from the respective uh, the base images and then it's going to build our uh, source code compile it and then get ready with all the image i know the the dls and all these things to, uh, ready for the publish that's what you're seeing on my screen so it's going to do all of these things it's going to get ready with the published folder you see this now the image is ready great now the image is ready uh, the image has our source code compiled with all the you know the DLLs and everything so now we are going to see one by one step in the docker all right now let's clear the screen and we will use a command called docker space image slash ls so it's going to list down all the images that is there in our uh, the local docker desktop so i have other things are showing up thing but whatever we did right ls slash uh, uh, restaurant api so that's the version that we want and with the tag 1.0 it is there that's what it is listing in the first one see it even says about a minute ago we just did it right now that's how you see the list of images in the local docker desktop now we are going to run this image okay which will eventually generate a container for us so what is the command for that the command is docker space run space dash p dash p is for port mapping we are saying 8080 port is mapped to the port called 80. So if you look at the Docker um, file, right, uh, we have exposed 80 port. Now we are saying this application should run in 8080 port. And if you look at this, we are using an ASP.NET Core environment. Also, if you look at this, right, so the development uh, and the production JSON, production doesn't have the DB context, but uh, development has it, right? So I'm going to say when I run this container, I'm going to pass a, a environment variable. That's why it's dash E space. And I'm following the environment variable. Environment variable is ASP.NET uh, underscore environment is equal to. I'm passing this as a development. So this will be passed into the container. Now we will also specify dash dash name and then provide a name. Just a name, right? And then here the name of the image, right? So the name of the image with the tag is lsc slash restaurant api colon 1.0. So you after you provide the container name that you wanted to run, you specify that it should run in a detached mode dash t space image name. Now this will build a container and you see this lengthy number that's called the uh, container unique number. And to check the con running containers just use the command docker space ps it will list down the running containers right all the containers basically now and this one is running in 8080 port like if you remember we specified 8080 port which is mapped to the 80 port of the container see if i go and click on the swagger it's loading and even if i try to execute one of the apis it's it's giving me the real-time database results so our images and containers are perfectly good we are running right now with the development app settings okay you can pass the different different environment variables and that will tell you how to do it now let's go to hub.docker.com okay once i log in uh, this is how it will show but you know don't worry when you do you may not see all of these images because i already ran it right so click on the repository 
and uh, we are going to now push this image to this repository so the namespace here is my username followed by the repository name so for the sake of this demo i'm going to create another repository so that i can show you how to push this built images right so the rest the, the repository name you can name it however you want i'm naming it as restaurant reservation api or maybe a different one restaurant uh, api just to keep simple or let's say restaurant reservation API. All right, so the repository name is restaurant reservation API and you just give some short description because this image is public. If someone comes and look at this image, they will know what this image is, right? You just have 100 characters. If I'm not wrong, you have to be very precise in giving this description, a very short description. So I will give this as a short description like this and then I'll choose this as a public. Okay, I'm not choosing this private because I my intention is to use uh, get this use I know these images to be used by everyone. Now once you create the repository, this is how it looks. Right now there is no image, there is no tag, just an empty repository in the Docker.com. Now click on Docker. I mean you provide a command called Docker space login. It is authenticating based on your local Docker login for the docker desktop you logged in right so based on that it is locally authenticating it and you are now recognized as a logged in user if you have not logged in it will definitely prompt you to log in the browser now we have cleared the screen and next thing is to tag this image and then we will be able to push the image now let's go to image in the docker uh, thing let's copy the image name which is lse slash restaurant api colon 1.0 because that includes the tag as well all right now let's say docker space tag space the image name that you have it in your local followed by the image name that you are going to tag it to the docker.com hub.docker.com here the image name is uh, the, the username followed by the repository name followed by the tag so here in my case it's learn smart coding slash restaurant reservation api colon 1.0 I can have different number as well, but I just wanted to keep it uh, in sync. So both are now 1.0. Remember, it's username slash repository name colon tag name. Now, once you have tagged it, right, let's run a command called docker space image ls. Now you see this, the first two, right, you, you tagged based on an existing image. So that's why you got the tag but you also got the image id to be same because the second one that we tagged is based on the another image right that's why the image id is same now this is how you see the tagged images now we are going to take this one and push to the hub.docker.com so how do you do that it's very simple docker space push space the image of the tagged one in this case learn smart coding slash the student Reservation API colon 1.0, which do exist in our image, uh, you know. Now, see, it, it has tagged, it pushed the image to the repository. Now, if I come and refresh this, you will see the image coming up here with the tag called 1, 1.0. All right, let's wait for that. You got it, right? Great. So, you got this one, right? That's it, guys. You got the image built, tagged, and pushed to the registry this is very simple correct now you can go and explore more on this pushed image now it clearly says the image is based off the linux amd 64 os and then it just has a compressed version of uh, size of 92 megabyte and last time what it was pushed what it has all of these things it will show you right now you have an image in the public registry and anyone can pull this registry i mean this image and run it in their locals which means whatever code we took it from github.com they don't need to do it it's already done and working uh, image is ready right so they also have any you know the the command here command to pull right if someone comes here they can just use uh, docker space uh, pull space the name they can pull the image right it's very easy see docker space pull space the image uh, they learn smart coding username slash username slash image i mean repository name followed by the tag so once you've done that it's pulling the image and you have it ready great so now you can use this image to run the application 
and you can also use the docker space image class ls to list down all the images that we have and it should show up whatever you pulled as well all right now let's check the container so how do you check uh, the containers that is locally there in your machine right so we need to know what command is that we already saw what to do with so now let's say docker space ps which will list down all the running containers right now it looks like there's no container because we stopped the containers now let's first run an image that will eventually generate a container so i'm going to pull up the existing command but here i'm going to remove the existing image which is lse slash this one i'm going to remove this instead of that i'm going to use the image that we pulled from the docker registry right so if you look at this learn smart coding slash restaurant reservation api colon 1.0 that's the image that we pulled if i just run that oops it got errored oh that's because um, you know there was a container which was already running on a name right we just need to uh, delete that now if you come back with the same command uh, and then probably change the name of the container that we wanted to run i'm naming it as restaurant api demo and then you got the unique id and this, you see this this new container is now running on the same port if i click on it it is running the application based on the new image that we pulled from the hub.docker.com i mean the docker registry right so now we know how to do that right we got this we clear the screen now what we will do is we will use the docker uh, ps command now it will tell you the container name because this command will list down all the containers that are running on your local machine now with this container name if you just copy the container id what you have to do is docker space logs space the container id so we're going to see a bunch of uh, useful commands in order to see the logs inside the container you use this docker log space the container name now now if you look at this this uh, application right when we try to run it it should generate some log if the logging is set up properly probably it will generate the log uh maybe the logs are written in the application insights but there are there's a way to to generate the logs in the console and if you wanted to see such logs when you use this docker space log space the container id it will tell you uh, it will show you the the logs that has been generated so in other words when you run this application in cache stall mode in the in the console that if you don't see any logs that's what you're seeing in the container as well if you see logs that the same thing you will see in the container as well but for this application there is no much logging happening when you execute these things probably when it happens if the error it will show you the logs but as long as we see some logs it's okay so this is how you see the logs inside the container that is what i'm trying to tell you so you will use docker space log space container name to go inside and see the logs that is generated inside the containers now let's see some basic troubleshooting tips all right back on screen so what we are going to do is we are going to use the first command as docker space ps this you already know we just saw it fills down all the containers great the next command is docker space log space container name this also we just saw we just need to copy the container name and go and put that it will show you the logs inside the container at least one log is there which is starting the application that's fine so two commands we learned right what is the next command docker space execute v e x e c space dash i t and followed by the container name and then you can either use the bash or the cell basically when you use this command you are logging into the container and now right now you're inside the container so inside the container is that's why it says app slash and then you can just put dirl ls and we'll list down all the dls that is there now let's use the same command with sh also okay so you can go inside the container and uh, see that's linux container right so basically whatever is inside a uh, copied one right that is what you are uh, trying to see so you can use ss also and if you do a dir it is going to list down all the you know the packages that we built and put it into the published folder contents that's what i meant so now you can use those commands to get into the container and see what files are inside so we have learned a uh, couple of commands the next command is you can use docker space inspect space container name once you do that it will give you the container details it will give you the container id when it is created what is the state of the container and a bunch of information i you can you can slowly go through all of these things but basically i wanted to show you that you can use these commands to see the 
uh, you can inspect the container basically it will tell you what port it is running and you know all of those informations right the ip address the gateway they are all useful when you get into uh, you know deeper into docker or the kubernetes now the next one is docker space stats you seeing the statistics of the docker container so docker space stat space container name will give you the statistics of the container now i'm trying to generate more uh, calls to this container and you can literally see the memory use is getting increased as and when i click a couple of endpoints and you can see something is varying right so that's what basically the live statistics of the container Okay, if a lot of uh, application, if a lot of calls are coming to this, you can use the statistics to see the statistics of the container. You can see how much it's memory using and you know all of those things. Um, next thing is Docker space difference DIFF space followed by the container name. So I copied the container name properly. If you do this, it will basically tell you the difference between uh, difference in the container, right? So these are the uh, you know the initial with respect to the uh, the the published content that we have let's use this image and put it into our azure website right let's see how we can do that now go to azure.portal.com like portal.azure.com and then once you log into the thing you can click on azure web app and create a new app service instance i'm choosing the subscription the resource group I'm going to maintain as Docker Demo RG. You can use the existing or the new one. You know about the resource group. You can later delete the complete resources associated with this resource group. Now, the instance detail, right? The name is unique, right? You, the name has to be unique. Uh, looks like the name that I have is unique. There's a typo here. I realized later it is LSE. It's not LAS, but it's okay. Let's go with what we have now. We are choosing the Docker container and it is a Linux thing. Linux is the OS, right? So that's why I choose Docker container and Linux is the OS. Next step is the Docker. See here, you can choose a single container and choose the registry. We have Docker Hub, we have Azure Container Registry or your own private thing. Ours is sitting in Docker Hub. So choose the Docker Hub and it's a public type. And here you need to put the name properly. The image and the tag name. So here our username slash repository name followed by colon 1.0 that's the tag name right so once you specify this right and then if you keep going to the next next step network is default monitoring i'm going to enable the app and search for this i'm choosing yes and then you can use the tag click on the rate and once you hit on create azure will go and access this image and pull the image and it is going to build the image I mean the image is already built I'm sorry so the built image has been going to pulled and going to create a container and put it into this app service now if you click on this website our .NET core 7 web API that we were running in local is going to run on the deployed Azure website and you see this in a moment this is going to come up and remember there's something important that I will tell you right so when this is loading in general the asp.net underscore environment will be production okay so whatever we uh, it pulled up and ran it will uh, it has not it has passed the asp.net environment as production you remember when we did we have to pass the environment variable so azure knows i mean the, the website knows how to pass and by default uh, this is configured as uh, production now if you see this into the log stream right you will be able to see that it is pulling this image and it is creating a container and container is what it is running it it passes all the required uh, you know other parameters arguments and all those stuff it knows what to do it does everything and then it makes sure the container is running on that website url okay we know that swagger ui is now working right it has passed everything but let's explore it by clicking one of the api and click on execute and bet it will give you 500 great see you know why it is giving 500 if you remember uh, we, i showed you in the production configuration only in dev configuration there is a url right for the database for production it doesn't have and by default when you run these instance in the uh, azure the environment is by default it's production you can change the environment or you can copy this uh, URL, I mean the content of the database connection string, go to configuration 
and create a uh, configuration for the DB context. So click on connection string, click on new connection string, give the exact name DB context, exactly how it was there in the configuration. And then I'm copy pasting the value, clicking on save and then continuing to save. It's all saved. Now what will happen in the runtime because this variable is here, Azure knows how to pass this variable value to this application now because we just did that we need to restart this application go to overview and click on restart so if you go to oh so if you go to overview and click on restart it's going to ask you to restart and it successfully restarted i clicked on restart right now click on the url and i can assure this is going to work right so we're going to go to the swagger go to one of the endpoints that was not working because it's it doesn't have the database now you click on it it is runtime it passed the real database connection string and we are able to get the data from the real database, right? That's how it works. It goes to now if you go to application insights, right? And you can actually uh, click on the monitor, like, for example, you click on the application insights, you go inside this. And because uh, our application insights, uh, this new application insights is uh, configured, it will show up the incoming request. You can see the failed request, you can see the response time and everything is recorded, right? So in order, if, if the container is not working, you should know the basic commands to troubleshoot the container. However, if everything is working, application insights will tell us all the information about the application performance, right? Because we have already configured the app insights properly. Now, whenever you do this as a first time, this application insights uh, instrumentation key will not be there. You need to place that instrumentation key properly but there's something called a monitoring so you can troubleshoot more in terms of monitoring go to monitoring and go to log stream the log stream will tell you that the container is uh, is not enabled for the for the logging right you just need to enable the logging so how do you enable the logging go to app service log and click on file system basically what we are saying is whatever the container is trying to log right it doesn't have permission to log we need to give a, a place a space to uh, put the log and this is what the file system so under wherever the ftp location is deployed it will create the logs there now after doing this if you go to log stream it will not show you that container is not registered for logging i mean container is now enabled for logging right now if you go to this uh, documentation it shows you uh, how you can download the logs from this particular location. Okay, for this to happen, you have to be logged in into that uh, portal.azure.com and you have, you should have access to, to what you're trying to get it. Now, our API project is deployed to a particular URL, right? That URL, what I'm going to do is, this is the syntax, right? So your name, your app name, that, so your app name dot sem dot azure websites dot net slash this this url right so i'm going to replace that alone here and then click on it it will download the now it will ask me to log in and then see now it's downloaded okay so the logs are downloaded because you're authorized to go and get the content because you're the owner of the website now you can see these two logs right whatever you saw in the live stream log that is what this is Initially, it showed that you don't have access and then you have access. All of these things are showing up. The second one is the application log. And you see this, there's only one log. That's why when we did Docker space, log space, container name, we saw only one log. Great. Now, much easy. Now, what we can do is, all right. So what we're going to do is, we're going to go to this kind of a website, right, which I did already deploy. This is the UI application, which is using the the API that we just saw. Now we are going to do the same thing using the docket. So now I will open up uh, the URL here. This is the website. I mean, this is the, uh, so this is the Angular uh, UI, right? So in order to get that code, go to this repository and go and click on LSA restaurant table app, booking app. This is the Angular 16 app. Okay, so I'm going to clone this website and and you can you can also clone it if you already have it, it's fine. You can either download it as a zip or you can clone it. Now I cloned it and I'm opening that cloned application here. So if I go back, this is the uh, one which I cloned it. Basically, I only pushed it. So I'm opening that in code space dot, which will open up in Visual Studio 
code and once the visual studio code open up this application i'm going to expand it see here by default angular application will not have a, a docker file right so we already spoke about docker and all those details so we are going to create a docker file for this application it should be very simple and in and remember this docker file should be outside the source folder okay it should be on the project level where the packages are placed so i'm trying to create it here it's not working i'm going to put that file outside and then open it for you now i created the docker file which is just at the same level of the package.json and if you look at this this docker file employs a multi-stage approach to build a docker image for an angular application here's the summary of the key steps in each stage okay the first one is building the angular application using the node.js base image it starts with an official node.js image, specifically the latest version, as the base image for the build stage. Now you can use a different version if your application is pointing to a particular node version. The working directory inside the container is now set to slash usr slash local slash app. Now the source code of the Angular application is copied into the container's working directory and then we will do a npm install command that is used to install all the necessary dependency for the application. After that, we will use npm space run build prod. See, this build prod is one of the config that's coming from the uh, package.json. And a uh, package.json will have a build prod that on my application that will have a, another a script that has to be run. So basically, that script is what is going to run, which will eventually take the production configuration. Now, the second stage. So the application with nginx using an nginx base image. See now it uses an official nginx image as a base image for the second stage. The build output of the angular application that was created in the first stage is copied to replace the default content of the nginx server. This content is copied from the particular disk location directory in the build stage to this nginx slash html location directory. Okay, which is in the nginx container. The expose 80 statement indicates that the container will be listening on port 80, which is the default HTTP port for serving the web application. So in summary, this Docker files multi-stage approach first compiles and builds an Angular application using the Node.js base image. And then it uses an nginx base image to serve the build application. This approach helps create an optimized Docker image for our running an Angular web application with nginx as the web server. So before we proceed next, right, I wanted to talk something about this font. So line number 26, right? So you see this, it's taking from app slash dist folder, okay, and then copying it to this folder. But this slash disk is because if you go to tsconfig.json, output directory is just dash slash dist here generally project name will come okay so if you have a project name here then what will happen the same thing has to go in the docker file as well which is slash the project name because i don't have it and i'm directly putting into this folder i was using app slash disk but remember this is important if not it won't build because it cannot even take the files which is built all right that's something that i wanted to tell before we proceed all right now what we are going to do is we are going to the place where this file do exists uh, which is this location and we can use the uh, you know the same uh, docker image build and uh, all of those things uh, we can push it and we can do everything now before we proceed right if you look at this the one we just deployed sometime back i'm going to copy that url as the base url because if i go to this config creation where my server url is pointed right so right now it's pointing to a different place now if i have to deploy my angular application which should uh, also access the recently deployed api then i need to change the server url which i'm doing it in the configuration so i went to the location where the project is uh, present all right so we're going to use the docker build command to build it so docker space build dash t followed by the name and then dash f docker file dot now because everything is in correct place and it's going to read the docker file and it's going to build an image so while this is getting built what we will do is for uh, saving some time i'm going to go to the hub.docker.com go to the repository and create a new repository for us to push this angular application image so i will use the same name restaurant reservation spa this is a single page application so i will name the repository as simple as that and uh, in this short description, you provide a short description. We already discussed about it. It's only for the understanding of uh, people who come visit here and trying to take the image. 
So I'm saying it's an angle six application for a stone reservation. Great. So Grammarly is helping me to correct my grammars. Fine. So this is done. So here is what our image is going to be pushed. Okay. So while uh, we work on that, we will click on the web app and create a new web app for our Angular application. So I'm going to choose the same result. So I'm going to choose the subscription, going to choose the same resource group. I'm going to uh, name a uh, unique name here. Uh, and that will name will be, I'm going to have a unique name here and that name is going to be for the Angular application. So in this case also, it's a Docker container, Linux. I named it as uh, LSC table reservation spa. And if you go to the next step, the Docker, you choose the Docker container, the single container and Docker hub is the registry name. We already saw it's exactly the same how we did for the API. It's going to be a publicly accessible image and then followed by the image name. You see this, this image name is always going to be the username slash repository name colon 1.0. This 1.0 can differ and the repository name can differ. Now, I'm just keeping it ready there, right? It's not yet done. The image is still getting built, but we saved some time. We went ahead and created the repository. We went ahead and to uh, portal.azure.com and, and trying to create a web application like the Azure app service for this, right? Now, once the build is ready, then we can tag it and push it to the uh, hub.docker.com, which is nothing but the Docker registry. So we'll wait for it and then we will quickly tag it and push it. See, now only it is running NPM run npm npm build prod see now it's all done it is exported all of our build folder has been exported now the image is ready basically so if you wanted to run the image you can run the image locally and see the application is working everything should be good all right so the image is ready so what we will do is we use the docker space tag followed by the image name that we created and then followed by the the image name that is sitting in the docker registry so in this case our local image name is restaurant table reservation spa which is uh, 1.0 as the tag followed by learn smart coding slash restaurant reservation spa colon 1.0 that is how we wanted to tag right this is important username slash the positive name is super important if you don't put it correctly it won't push because it there is no repository access so it cannot push right but this 1.0 is something that you are doing it right you can tag it as latest you can you can tag however you want this is for the incremental purpose and understanding purpose right now we tagged it we use the docker push command and then followed by the the tagged image name now this is successfully pushed which means if you refresh here the image should come and sit here with 1.0 as the tag version now let's go back to azure where we stopped here so at this point of time the image do exist so we can proceed here right so we were doing multitasking right so keep up with me so monitoring is enabled we went to the review and create validated click on create now this will pull up that image create a container and it will make sure it runs in the new website that we plan to host it now once the deployment is in progress we can just wait for a few seconds it should be very quick all right the deployment is completed click on go to resource and then here there's nothing that we need to change uh we are already in the resource i mean it's not like api right there's no configuration everything is already in the application so let me refresh this and uh, i got the domain url you click on the domain url and it should bring up our beautiful angular application so let's wait for it great so how do i prove that this is accessing the api that we just deployed right so this is the angular application right now this is the now, this is the Angular application and this is the one that we recently deployed. You see this LAS, right? It's in, it's a mistake in the spelling. So let me open up the network tab, go to F12 and open up the developers tool and click on the API that's going out. Now it's proven that the Angular application that we containerized and deployed is calling the containerized.net core web API. So we have containerized two applications in this Docker session. We learned what is Docker. We were able to figure out all the Docker, most of the important Docker commands. We were able to containerize two applications. We understood how Docker images work, how the Docker files are configured, you know, each of the Docker lines in the Docker file, right? And then we were able to deploy these two applications to Azure portal. And each of them are talking to each other. And 
all of these are possible in less than one hour i hope you enjoy this video and to summarize we were able to go through the dockers for beginner course we started with what is docker understanding how the containerization is working why it is important to use a docker and how it is going to benefit us as well as followed by we were exploring the docker images and then followed by we took the application for dotnet core web api 7 and then we took dotnet core 7 web api restaurant table reservation app and then we built the image we were able to run the image locally we tagged it we pushed it we created the repository in the docker hub and we were able to push the images to the registry then we followed the same step for the angular application and we also deployed both the application into azure portal in azure app service web app so this concludes our course and this is the short and crisp and much informative course for the docker for beginners i hope you enjoyed this video and if you like this video don't forget to subscribe to my channel share with your friends give me a thumbs up like and i will see you in the next video which is docker compose we will deep dive into docker compose in the next video thank you with signing off karthik and see you in the next video thanks for watching if you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more tech tutorials. And don't forget to hit the bell icon to get notified when we post new videos. If you have any questions or suggestions, leave them in the comments below. Happy coding!